Welcome, welcome to Erudition's PAT walkthrough videos. This video is intended to equip you with all the strategies you'll need to fully understand and correctly answer the angle ranking problems on your DAT. Angle ranking problems are the ones where you have a set of angles and you have to order them from the smallest to the largest. These problems can be pretty daunting. They tend to be kind of boring and tedious and you have to look at angle after angle after angle and your eyes just glaze over. That's why it's really important to have a solid strategy going into these problems so your brain can stay more active and engaged. So let's get into it. For the angle ranking problems, you're really gonna to wanna to take advantage of the DAT's cross out function. This feature is helpful for all the different kinds of problems, but it's especially important for the angle ranking problems because all the answers are really specific and fully written out for you. So, since you're going to be referring back to them over and over again, it's incredibly helpful to cross out the ones that are no longer in the running. This process of elimination is one of the most important tools for angle ranking problems. Here, we have a standard angle problem. Your first step when approaching the problem will be to try and pick out obvious outliers. In this problem, for example, angle one kind of strikes me as the smallest angle and angle three stands out as the largest. Determining that angle one is the smallest doesn't actually help me eliminate any of the answer choices because they all list angle one as the smallest angle. However, only two of the answer choices list angle three as the largest angle. Therefore, I can eliminate answers A and B. And that already gives me a 50-50 chance of getting this problem correct before I've even analyzed the remaining two angles. The second step is to use the remaining answer choices to figure out which angles we still need to compare in order to find our correct answer. To finish the question, we'll have to compare angle two and angle four. I'll get into some more detailed strategies about how to compare individual angles in a later video. So for now, we can just kind of see angle two seems a little bit thinner, a little bit sharper than angle four so we can determine that it's likely the smaller of the two. That means we're able to eliminate choice C, making choice D our correct answer. Are we kind of getting the hang of it? Let's try another. This second example is from our level three angle ranking question banks, which is where we'll find a slightly more challenging problem. With this problem, we're really gonna need to ground ourselves and look over all the angles and see if anything stands out. In this case, Angle two and angle four, which are both sort of pointing in the same direction, they look to me to be a little bit larger than angle one and angle three. They look a little more open. So I'm actually going to divide the answer choices, largest and smallest. As you can see down here, choices A and D don't separate angle two and angle four as the largest angles. So we can eliminate those two answers. Now, if we take a look at our remaining two answers, we'll actually wanna compare angle two and angle four with one another in order to find our answer. Looking a little bit closer at these angles, I can kind of see angle four is a little bit thinner, a little bit sharper at the point. So I think it's actually a little smaller than angle two, meaning that choice C would be our correct answer. So let's find out. Great, that's correct. And if you're using our product, you can actually scroll down and compare your approach with the approach we used in our correct answer analysis in our explanations down below. Of course, there are always many ways of approaching a problem and a lot of different strategies you could use. So try some things out. For this last example, I wanna talk about what to do when a problem is just really hard to get a footing in. There aren't a lot of outliers. There's not a lot for you to grab a hold of in order to start your process and approach. Let's go to problem number 13 in our level three question bank. This problem shows much bigger angles, which can often be the trickiest kind because the differences between them are really not very obvious to the eye. I don't really see any obvious outliers and it's just really hard to make out what's going on. That means instead of trying to order them all in my head, I'm gonna wanna look straight down to the answer choices to sort of guide my comparisons. As you can see down here, all of the answer choices list angle one or angle three as your options for the smallest angle. So to start off, we can compare those. There are lots of different ways you can interpret angles, and we'll get to some of those in other videos. But for bigger angles like this, I would recommend comparing them to a right angle in your head. Thinking about it this way, 
you can see that angle 1 is much closer to 90 degrees, illustrated by our right angles here. It's closer to 90 degrees, which means that it's smaller than angle 3. And if that's the case, we can eliminate choice A and choice C. After this, we can look down on our answer choices and see that the remaining answer choices really only differ in what they list as the second to smallest angle, and the options listed are either angle 3 or angle 4. So again, I'm going to mentally compare them to a right angle, or 90 degrees. This time, angle 3 looks a little bit closer to a right angle than angle 4. Therefore, angle 3 is a little bit smaller. So, just like that, I can eliminate choice D, and choice B is our correct answer. All right, so to summarize, you want to focus on using elimination. Cross out any wrong answers as you go through your process. This will help you from getting overwhelmed and confused. When you're approaching a problem, you want to start by identifying obvious outliers. That means asking yourself, does any angle stand out? Is any angle obviously larger, obviously smaller? Are any pairs of angles obviously the larger two or obviously the smaller two in the problem? and then see if this allows you to eliminate any wrong answers. From there, your second step will be to use your remaining answer choices to guide your comparisons. That way, you'll only have to compare angles that you need in order to answer the question. Please take a look at our other video on angle ranking strategies, where you can learn tips how to mentally evaluate different types of angles. That's all for this video. Try some of these strategies out for yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.